Hello and welcome back to the channel. <laughs> it's part two of the conversion of the fishing wagon stroke utility van. And what am I up to today? Well, this morning I spent two hours making a cardboard template of the floor. And I had to do that because there wasn't a floor down. There wasn't a floor down and I didn't want to just risk taking measurements and working to a drawing. So what I've done so far, I'll give you a quick look. So as you can see, quite a simple template. I deliberately haven't cut round the door area, the sliding door area yet. And the beauty of a full size van is you can collect your sheet material and it goes in lovely. I deliberately decided not to insulate my floor because this is going to be a dual purpose van. It's going to be a utility van for transporting bulk items, heavy building materials and motorbikes. And it's also going to double up as my fishing wagon. A fishing wagon with some creature comforts. So I'm going to be able to sleep in there. It's going to have diesel heating. It's going to have alternative power supplies, solar, split charge, and it's going to have an inverter to run a microwave. But all of that, all of the surplus stuff is going to be removable. But I look forward to the comments. So if you've got some comments towards what I'm doing with my flooring, oh, you should have battened and put 20 mil Celotex. Decided against that. Oh, you only needed 12 mil ply. I thought about that. I've deliberately gone for the 18 mil. No Celotex, no battens. We'll see how we get on. And if anything else, it's a learning curve. And if I do something that's wrong and you guys can benefit from it, happy days. But other than that, I'm going to prep this timber, get my template out, start cutting some wood. Make big pieces of wood into small pieces of wood. <laughs> As you can see now, I've laid out the three sheets of ply. I've buttered them together and I'm just about to witness mark them so that I know they go back exactly as they're laid out now. They're tightly buttered together. My driveway isn't perfectly flat. I don't know if you can just see the gaps. And let's just see, there's a gap there that runs all along. There's a gap there that runs all along. And that's just through the car wheels when they've gone up and down the driveway. I've sort of just divoted that in slightly. But it's not going to affect what I'm doing because I'm going to lay the template, mark the boards, and then cut inside of my lines. Because when you put the template down and you mark outside, those lines are then bigger than the template. So the idea will be to cut inside the template for an easier fit in the van. Laying the straight edge on top of the cardboard and using the straight edge as opposed to the cardboard itself. So for the long straights and the plunge cuts, I'm going to be using a cordless circular saw. day two of flooring on the fishing wagon and it's been fighting me all the way <laughs> it's been an absolute nightmare not too bad um, but there's aspects there's the floors not quite quite straight in one position and because I want to retain the loading straps the loading fixing points which have seen better days as well so they're going to take a little bit of work to sort those out um, yeah 
So I managed to do it using three sheets. It would have been possible to do it in two sheets, but I'd have had some very thin strips and I wanted to avoid that. And the key loading areas, I wanted large pieces so that when they're screwed and bonded down, then they were going to be strong and they weren't going to flex and move around. Um, so what have I been doing? So this morning, I've saved you the, the tortuous path of the bits and pieces, but this board has had to be relieved on the back side because of aspects to the floor. And I've cut the loading points for the secure points for, for lashing. Um, and it's a nice tight fit. It's a nice tight fit that I don't want to really remove any more. So I'm ready for bonding this down. How am I going to bond it down? Well, I'm going to use a combination of methods. The first one is I'm going to use an adhesive. Now this is Evo stick and I can't tell you what it's called because I don't think I'm allowed. But it's clear. So that's the first part of what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a bead in strategic places of that stuff. And I'm going to use tech screws. Now I do not want to just smash a load of tech screws through my flooring. I'm going to put these in places to give the adhesive a chance to bond. And it's worth showing a tech screw. So a tech screw has got a drill bit to start, then a self-tapping screw, and then on the countersink, because there's countersink ones that I'm using, there are tiny little blades to help countersink it. And this is a PH2 fitment. And that's important to know. And you find that on the packet. So it actually says on there, PH2. Really important. PH2 is the type of head, and I'm going to put it in a holder. So a PH2 head in a holder that fits that screw. And this one's magnetized. It is the perfect fitment. If you try and use a PZ2, chances are it's going to spin and damage the head. I'm going to drive these in to self counter sink themselves. So the head needs to be the perfect fitment. I've already checked underneath, so I'm not going to screw into anything that I wouldn't like to. Because <laughs> that would be devastating as well. Um, yeah, let's lift that completely out of the way. I'm going quiet because I'm concentrating. <laughs> the only thing I haven't done yet is poke my tongue out. <laughs> Because the floor's continuous and the ribs in the floor are continuous, it would have been possible to biscuit these boards together. And I chose, I chose not to. Um, not because I can't, or that it was time consuming or costly or any of those. I just didn't think it was that necessary. Um, my little high spot here, I'm just Mr. Whippy in. A nice little bead. And then I'm trying to be quick with this because what I don't want to do is for this adhesive to form too much of a skin because I would like it it's got to be put down straight away basically so I can't I can't pause I can't take time I've got witness marks from a pencil so I know where it needs to go just ease it down straight away it's got they, they call it high tack but you can actually feel that that is gripping it's hardly moving at all already but what I want to do now is in a carefully considered pattern put some of these tech screws down and the first one is going to be dead center just double check
So the next job will be to prep the biggest and the middle board, check for cutouts, clean these up, and we're good to go. That was the one that had me worried. I'm taking a lot of time over this because it is a main loading area of the van. And it's gonna get a lot of foot traffic as well as I step in and out of the van. Um, I'm also gonna be carrying some quite heavy items as well. So my motorbikes, the largest of which is over 200 kilograms, is gonna take quite some effort in loading. And I wanna make sure that my footing, you know, you don't want any give in this floor at all. After going to all that trouble to fit that rear part of the floor and recover the load points and make sure I maintain them, this was the sort of mess of the load points that were in there and they are seized absolutely solid and the bolts have seen better days as well. So only surf surface um, dirt but they're absolutely loaded with the bed liner so when they sprayed the bed liner onto the floor of that that van they didn't they didn't mask up any of these so they are in an absolute mess so that's what they should be like <laughs> albeit that's been wire brushed to death <laughs> when I say wire brushed to death that's what I did to my poor wire brush <laughs> my wire brush has seen better days but I've used a selection of other wire brushes and a knife to dig out the bed liner um, and I've got a function low point now, which can go back to the van. So I'm gonna to have to run a die nut down the bolt, clean all that up, give it all a coat of paint. That one needs my full attention now and needs to have all that bed liner dug out of it and wire brushed with an inch of its life. And when I've got two of those painted and freed up, they can go back in the van. Because the weather's turned bad and I'm, I'm waiting for the flooring to dry the pieces that I've done this morning it's quite satisfying just to come in and do quite menial jobs in out of the weather the weather's turned a little bit today just come in the only reason why I haven't got the music on is because I'm, I'm talking to you guys the, um, but it's nice sometimes just to come in the workshop put the music on working low points Two cleaned up sets of bolts. Um, sat in black. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Perfect Amanda. So the floor is now fully bonded and screwed down. I've tried to use the minimum amount of tech screws because I didn't want just loads and loads of holes in the floor. There was a slight issue where I chose not to shim or batten the floor because I wanted to retain full head height. And just at the junction here, there was a couple of high spots and you can see in the changing colors here and here that the floor wasn't perfectly true. So I've just eased it out with the sander. And the other thing that I think is important to look at is on this leading edge, the boards are running straight, but along this area here, there's a lack of support, especially in that little piece there. So with that lack of support, I've had to put packers underneath and bond them in. And then just to add that extra rigidity and to make sure, because this is a high footfall area, it's going to get a lot of pressure on here. I've screwed these end on and they're directly onto the edge. It took quite a lot of time to scribe that and I didn't take time to film it because I was concentrating. I wanted to make sure that it was done properly. Eventually with the flooring covering and I've decided to go with outro flooring after all the choices that I did have. I'm going with outro flooring and then there'll be a metal right angled edge on there just to protect the leading edge of the floor. So really until the outro flooring arrives there's only one real job left 
and that's the pockets. So these pockets here, and I've refurbished all the lifting points. They've all been stripped, repainted and freed up. I'm going to paint them black. I'm going to paint the whole pocket black and I've got five of those to do. Three down that edge, two down this edge. So in the end I retain two, four, six, eight low points and that's going to give me the option for strapping stuff down including motorbikes and other bits of kit. I've also taken the time to cork round all of the edges because I don't want any wood to metal contact so I deliberately left about a five mil gap because I don't want any hard wood to metal contact that's going to cause squeaks and then the whole edge has been corked all the way round with flexible sealant and there we go so the next job up paint the pockets and I don't know if you can see but I've strapped I've strapped my my little step in because it's so tall the van um, getting in and out of it's a bit of a bind and I've removed the panel at the back because I'm hunting out for electrics for a reversing camera so I'm going to fit a reversing camera and where there would be a rear view mirror there's going to be a four inch screen in the cab so I've got the floor rough laid and the time lapse will show you know, I've cut it roughly to length, over, over long, and I've got enough for two whole van fitments, so I've got a spare if it goes really wrong. But this is the bit, this is the nerve wracking bit. So I've got to do a series of relief cuts now. I'm going to loose fit the whole thing, cut it all to size. I'm going to cut it possibly two to three mil under. And that will become apparent later on because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape and silicon all the edges. And then when I pull the tape up, it's going to leave a crisp, clear bead all the way around the out outside of the van. I'm going to try and get a light or a dark gray to match either the light or the dark factors of what this is. And it is lovely. So this is outro flooring, very hard wearing. It's got a non-slip surface. And because it's one continuous sheet and I live on a slight incline on a hill, it's possible to mop out the van, leave the back doors open, and let it dry out. So if it gets a bit fishy in here, because it is the fishing wagon, this is the perfect stuff. I was going to go for, for phenolic board. I went this route in the end. 18 mil base ply and outro flooring on top. I've used this stuff once before on a previous van conversion and I'm hesitant. Anyone that's cut this stuff before knows exactly what I'm talking about, but Sitting here hesitant isn't going to get it done, so I need to crack on. Really pleased with how the floors turned out. Took a while, taking my time to make sure all the relief cuts are in. And the floor still has to be bonded in. And I'll use contact adhesive for that. But to give you an idea, it's down. Outro flooring, really hard wearing. I don't know if you can see, but it's got little flakes and it really dulls the blade really quick. So I'm really pleased with how the flooring's gone. It, the van's in constant use, so it is getting used all the time. But the flooring's turned out really, really nice. Really hard wearing, good stuff. I'm really pleased. I think it was the right choice in the end for what I'm actually utilising the van for. The one outstanding job on the flooring that I do need to sort out is I'm still trying to source some nice edge beading, some aluminium strip. But I'd like a dark grey or black anodised aluminium right angle bead. And I haven't found any yet. So with the flooring complete, the next project really is going to be the solar install. Solar install, charge controller, battery bank, one or two batteries. I'm still undecided. I've been doing the sums. So solar install, charge controller, battery bank and an inverter. Then we can look at auxiliary circuits, auxiliary lighting and power in the back of the van. 
that should take it to the next level of usability. Flooring's done. Next job on the list, solar install. Looking forward to it. Exciting stuff. Thank you for joining me. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.